Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here today with a video on um, trying to fix something that I said the other day in a previous vi video for Gina B. Aaron's design team video. And this is about pocket pages. Now the original idea that I started following, I got from Carla at Caged Fish on YouTube when she did um, a hop with uh, Shannon Green. So I learned how to do it. I was very excited and made many, many books with it. So I'm here today to show you. I have one, two, three, four different sizes to show okay, you. Okay, so here are some previous ones that I have made. Now these may not be the same sizes as the ones we're making today, but essentially it's the same concept. These are made with larger pieces of paper. Um, I think, what did I use for these? I may have used some kind of brown paper and then collaged over them because the paper was not that strong. But this is larger than an 8x12 piece of paper. And it was meant to be tall because I'd gotten tags from my friend Lindy and the tags were a little too tall for some of the other books. So I tried to make this, uh, the pockets, a little taller and larger so they would accommodate her tags. And then I made her, I think... Uh, one or two of these books. I think maybe it was one. I don't remember. All right, so this one is larger than an 8 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. This one right here is made from a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. As a matter of fact, all that you can see, there's my scrapbook paper in here. This is made by a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper, which is what I have here in front of me. So, um, that's that one. And you can see, now, I, these are in different binders, or different books, but you can see that, well, maybe you can't, I have so much stuff on them. <laughs> Do it this way, it doesn't matter, all that ribbon stuff. All right, one of these is taller than the other, how about we do it that way? So this is the 12 by 12, and this is, I can't remember, I think this is a 12 by 14 or 12 by 16 uh, pockets made from the original piece of paper was was 12 by 16. So that's those. Then I have made others from smaller pieces of paper. And then let me get my, uh, let me reload my Instagram here because I put them on Instagram a while ago. This one is made by 8 and a half, 11 piece of copy paper, which I'm going to use recreate it with this one right here because that way you can see there's a darker side of the paper and a lighter side so when I go to fold it you'll be able to see you know which way goes where so that made these pockets an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper which is just your basic copy paper that I um, colored painted jelly printed whatever on it okay so that's that size book then this one is made by a 6 by 12 piece of paper, which is this one right here. So I did it, and every one of them has a different pattern. Well, basically every one of them has a different pattern. This is the 6 by 12, 12 by 12, 8 and a half by 11. And to show you the difference between um, what, a, a, what one inch will make, I did this one as a 6 by 12, and this is a 5 by 12 and I will show you all the different size pockets um, that way we can see you can see all the differences all right so let me get these books out of the way okay, and I'll be here right back. is the 12 by 12 paper it is colored on one side and white on the other so you'll be able to tell distinctly what the difference is you're gonna need this a glue stick and a bone folder and a pencil so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take, oh, and you need a ruler, sorry. Take this, although I don't usually always measure, but you're going to take this and fold it in half. All right, right down the middle. You're going to take a ruler. I need my ruler here. I forgot to put it on table. And then you're going to find the center and measure one inch in. So here is the zero, and there's the one inch. Whoops, there's no lead on that pencil. Here we go. 
do one inch here and one inch here. Do it at the top and the bottom. And this is a guide for folding. Now you're going to take your paper and you're going to fold it in to where your one inch marks are. Try to get them as lined up as you possibly can. So all you got is this, like this. Okay, so, so far you got two folds. Now we're going to do this side to one inch where the pencil mark is. You're going to crease it. Then you're going to take the side pieces and you're just going to fold them into this first crease. Don't do them all the way to the line. I'm going to quick little run over with a bond folder or you can finger press it if or you have decent fingernails that will withstand it. That will be great. And you're going to take this one and fold it this way. And then this one's going to go this way. You're going to take these. You're going to fold them in. And I would give it one more press with the bone folder to be sure you're good. You need to take this and flip it over to the pattern side and fold the two, two pieces together. And make sure that the center part that creases, the two center parts are lined up and it's nice and even. Then you go down to the bottom, grease with the bone folder. Go back and erase your pencil marks. Don't forget that part. <laughs> Somebody will know what you've been up to. Then you can close it. Make a crease. Okay, so there is one pocket page with one piece of paper, no cutting. Now, you can do one of two things, but you definitely have to glue. So what you need to do is take yourself a little glue stick And you can do one of two things with the glue stick. You can glue the whole back side and press this all together. So that'll give you four pockets. Two here, two here, you're done. Or if you decide you want side pockets in them, just glue a small line of glue here. I'm just using a glue stick. Sometimes I use wet glue because I'm not sure I always trust my glue sticks. They're much neater, and I think they're faster than wet glue, but I'm not sure they always hold as well as wet glue. Not for everything. All right, so now what you've done is you've created two more pockets, and it kind of buckled. Here, let's go this way. Well, all right, so then you've created two more pockets. So what, you've, what you have is one, two, three, Four. But because you glued here at the top, you've also created, and my glue did not stick, suppose that it did, you've also created two pockets on the side of the, the pieces here, right? So it's really important that you get the pocket letter when you glue it. Make sure it's really lined up because this one for some reason is buckling and the glue does not seem to be holding very well. Let me try a different glue stick. Let me run the glue back down here again. You could do your ATG gun or your double-sided tape. Anything like that will do. It'll, it'll do the exact same thing. Let me make sure this is looks even. Just a tad off here. That's why I say use the bone folder and make sure you've done a good job with it. 
All right, so then you fold it, and sometimes it's going to buckle, but once the glue is dry, it'll work fine. You fold it in half, and then, like I said, if you make sure at least these here are really extra glued on the ends, that will give you two extra pockets here and here. So instead of having four pockets, you'll have six. So that's a 12 by 12. And then this is 12 by 12. And then I took, made a, a book for mine, but I put them in with rubber bands because I thought I would be taking them in and out more, which I have not, but I thought I would. So what you do is before you put them in, you stick you know, a rubber band in here in the crease and then stick it inside the book. Or you could three whole pamphlets stitch it in there or saddle stitch it, whatever is your pleasure. All right, so that's a 12 by 12. I'm right on here. 12 by 12. Wow, the glare is really bad. I'm sorry. It's a very cloudy day here, so I'm trying to regulate the light. All right, so the next one. Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So this is the side that is more heavily stamped than this side. So what I do is I take it, fold it in half. I don't want any glue on here. Let's make sure there's not on there. Then I fold it this way again and you'll see why in a second. I'm not going to measure the one inch thing. I found that I really don't need to do that but on the large one you kind of do all right so you've folded your paper into four squares right so then you're going to take the end piece and go to the middle almost to the middle now on the 12 by 12 we mark the inch you can still do that i just choose not to so you can go almost to the center fold And again, almost to the center fold on the other side. So that when you close it, they come together like this. You're going to do the flaps on the sides, but not all the way into the crease because it'll prevent stuff from folding properly. You can finger press it or you can, whoops, or you can use the bone folder. Just make sure it's nice and straight and even. And I have to tell you, sometimes they don't always come out right because I haven't folded them property, properly or folded one in a little further than the other. And that might be the reason why when Carla did the, um, the video that she marked it with the one inch to make sure that it comes out even. All right, so now you take these, you fold them in, and I'd give it one more nice little crease with the bone folder flip it over onto the side that's solid fold it up I'm not going to glue this because I don't want to fool around with the glue fold it up and then you can fold it in half and it'll, it'll fold a lot easier because you had previously folded it before and that is the difference between a 12 by 12 and an 8 and a half by 11 piece of paper. So this is eight and a half by 11. Eight and, whoops, that's the one with no lead. <laughs> eight and a half by 11 inches, and this is inches. Okay, so that's that. All right, so the next one.
So you see the difference? This is a whole sheet of scrapbook paper. This is half a sheet of scrapbook paper. What a difference that makes, right? All right, then this is the 8.5 by 11, which is these two are very common sizes that a lot of paper artists have. And there's the half for this one. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to show you what a difference an inch makes. This is a 5 by 12. Again, I'm going to... So I got another sheet of um, the same paper that I did the 12 by 12, 6 by 12, and 5 by 12. Now we're going to do this one. I think maybe I should take it down to, wait, so I did 6, 5, let's do a 4. and Well, no, let's do a 3 because it'll be more dramatic that way. So that's 2, a quarter, da -da -da -da. Two, a quarter, half, three quarters. That's three inches right there. I keep forgetting where three inches is on here. All right, so this is three inches. This one's going to be really small. ran out of memory. <laughs> okay, where was I? Oh yes, here I was. Alright, so this we're gonna this one's too close to the crease. Let me back that up. Well let's see if we do it this way. Let's back it up here. A little too close to the crease. Alright, now we're gonna get this one. I want to make sure it's not close to that crease again. Alright. Again, fold the two flaps in. You're going to fold this way, and again, you're going to not forget to erase your pencil marks here. And then you fold it this way. Now, this makes it really an, just an oblong book, like this. So, let me do them this way. I'm only going to do the pink ones. 12 by 12, 6 by 12, 5 by 12, and this one is, let me find a pencil with it, is a... 3 by 12. See what a difference the sizes make into what you can do? So this concept is limitless as, what, as to what you can do with it. It makes no difference. Alright, so just to prove the point, 
let me do this left left over left over piece of paper i'll see how big is this one we took three inches off of it so that'll make it what a nine by twelve all right so let's try again in half in half and again I don't really do the I just fold it into the very center I don't do the one inch out you can do it either way your pocket shape changes a little bit one inch one inch Okay, again, we do the middle part to the inch. These are made so fast. Once you get the hang of the first one, you'll go crazy trying different sizes. It took me a while to figure out how to get them sizes that I use most common. I think my most favorite size is the 6x12 because it makes almost square little pockets and I, I like this one and I really like this size and I like these three sizes the best. I never use this size and I rarely use 5x12. Okay, so let's do the ears. If you use two-sided paper, it's even more wonderful. But use, um, and something that I learned very quickly, because I'm not very good at making things come out perfectly even, is to not use paper that has a direction. You see, it doesn't matter what goes where. If it's slightly askew, it doesn't matter in this pattern. But if you use stripes or something that there's an up and there's a down, Stuff will be upside down when you fold it over to this side. There'll be some that's right side up, some that's upside down. So use something that has no direction to it. All right, so we're going to do these in the side. Oh, a little bit of resistance. I must have got too close to the crease. Fold it in half. And I haven't glued any of these guys. I'm not going to fool around with the glue. Now this is a nice size pocket here. All right, so here we go. I'm just doing the pink ones because they all came from a 12 by 12. So there's the 12 by 12, 6 by 12, 5 by 12. 7 by 12. So if you need a larger pocket, the 7 by 12 looks perfect because it's more what we think of as a regular shaped sort of thing. This is more a squarish shape and this is definitely a rectangle. So there you go. And then, you know, there's always the 8.5 by 11. Okay, so that's the pocket le uh, pocket letters. The pocket pages. I don't know why I want to call them pocket letters. Alright, so that's that. And of course, you know, you have the little weird size here. So um, I also wanted to make another comment that I am on Gina B. Aaron's design team and I keep forgetting to tell everyone that when you watch my video, if you make an order from her um, Etsy store, which I always link below, then you get a discount. I'll leave you a discount code down below in the description box that has my name and I think it's 15% maybe a little more. I don't know. I can't remember. She updated it yesterday and I haven't looked. So it's, it's at least 15. How's that? Um, so when you watch her videos and you want to order something, use my link so she knows that you saw it on my video. That's the whole point of doing this is that she knows where her sales are coming from to see, you know, what, what sales technique, I guess, that we're using with making things does the best. 
Alrighty, so that's it. So I did all these pocket pages and I set you straight where I learned it from. And I also told you about the discount code. I showed you different size books here that I've made in the past. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.